Fighter jets took off from Shinshu Air Base, Taiwan, after China held large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands Monday. China deployed an aircraft carrier along with warplanes, in a move that underscores the tense situation in the Taiwan Strait. China's defense ministry said the drills were a response to the Taiwanese president's refusal to concede to Beijing's demands that self-rule Taiwan acknowledge itself as a part of the People's Republic of China under the rule of the Communist Party. The drills came four days after Taiwan celebrated the founding of its government on its national day, during which Taiwan's President Lai ching te said in a speech that China has no right to represent Taiwan and declared his commitment to resist annexation or encroachment. The presidential office of Taiwan called on China to cease military provocations that undermine regional peace and stability and stop threatening Taiwan's democracy and freedom. A map aired on China's state broadcaster CCTV showed six large blocks encircling Taiwan indicating where the military drills are being held, along with circles drawn around Taiwan's outlying islands. China's defense ministry has not said how long the drills will last. China deployed its Liaoning aircraft carrier for the drills, and CCTV showed a J-15 fighter jet taking off from the decks of the carrier, though the exact location of the carrier is unclear. The PLA's Eastern Theater Command spokesperson Navy Senior Captain Li Shi said the Navy, Army Air Force, Missile Corps were all mobilized for the drills, as it was an integrated operation. This is a major warning to those who back Taiwan independence and a signifier of our determination to safeguard our national sovereignty, Li said in a statement on the service's public media channel. Taiwan's defense ministry said it had deployed its warships to designated spots in the ocean where they'd carry out surveillance and stand at ready. It also deployed its mobile missile and radar groups on land to track the vessels at sea. As of Monday morning, they had tracked 25 Chinese warplanes and seven warships and four Chinese government ships, though it did not specify what types of ships they were. China held similar large-scale exercises after Lai was inaugurated in May. Lai continues the eight-year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party that rejects China's demand that it recognize Taiwan is a part of China. Also on Monday, China's Taiwan Affairs Office announced it was sanctioning two Taiwanese individuals, Puma Shen and Robert Cao, for their work in promoting Taiwan independence. Shen is the co-founder of the Kuma Academy, a non-profit that trains civilians on wartime readiness. Cao donated $32.8 million to fund the Academy's training courses. Shen and Cao are forbidden to travel to China, including Hong Kong.
The elite 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet has lost approximately 80% of its forces in Ukraine, the BBC Russian service reported. The brigade, which has been fighting near Volodar in Donetsk Oblast since the fall of 2022, has suffered losses of around 2,400 soldiers. This means that out of the initial 3,000 troops, only 600 remain, according to the Russian agency agentsvo.news. The 155th Marine Brigade has been involved in the war against Ukraine since the first day of the full-scale invasion. The brigade initially fought in Kiev Oblast before retreating to Belarus and later being redeployed to Donetsk Oblast. Pro-Russian military correspondents reported significant losses for the brigade as early as November 2022 when it was fighting near the village of Pavlivka, about three kilometers from Volodar. At that time, the aggressor themselves claimed to be losing around 300 personnel every four days. Meanwhile, the Russian Ministry of Defense alleged that the brigade's losses over 10 days of fighting near Pavlivka did not exceed 1% killed and 7% wounded. The story of the 155th Brigade serves as a vivid illustration of the exhaustion of Russian units fighting on the most difficult sections of the front. Agents News writes, Ukrainian Defense Forces confirmed the withdrawal of their units from Volodar in Donetsk Oblast on October the 2nd. The 155th and 40th Marine Brigades of the Russian Federation could have lost more than 2,100 personnel in Volodar, including those killed, severely wounded, and missing in action, the BBC Russian service reported on October the 4th. This represents 40% of the pre-war strength of these two units. Currently, the 155th Brigade operates in the Kursk region, where it was moved in August 2024 after the start of the Ukrainian offensive in the Russian region. In August, fighters from this brigade published a recording showing the severed head of a Ukrainian soldier impaled on a post in the Belgorod region. Volodar, which the brigade had been attacking since 2022, only came under full Russian control at the beginning of October.